I know you all know this, but I think it's important to just to talk about kind of where we are. In, in 1999, there was one drug overdose death every 30 minutes in the United States. And in 2013, there was one drug overdose death every 12 minutes. That, that translates into 120 people um, every day who are uh, dying uh, in the United States as a result of a drug overdose, clearly driven by the magnitude of the prescription drug use issue and the now burgeoning her heroin issue uh, in the United States. Um, but part of what I do when I do these talks, and also to myself, is to, is to make sure that we are putting uh, faces and voices to people uh, with this epidemic. Um, you know, it's tremendously important when you're dealing with highly stigmatized people and highly stigmatized population that we not make them invisible and we really kind of honor their memory uh, and the work that we do. And these are just some faces of people uh, who uh, have died as a result of the epidemic. Um, for, the, for the past few months, I've been carrying this part of, card in my pocket. And many of you know that these are memorial cards that you get after funerals. And, this is a memorial card from a friend of mine's brother who died of an opioid overdose. And the family was so um, embarrassed and ashamed uh, that they didn't put an obituary in the paper and they didn't have a, 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 an open ceremony. And it reminds me every day that you know, we have work to do in terms of this uh, epidemic. This, uh, this is a woman who is from Holly Springs, Georgia. And I want, you, I want to read a letter that her mom sent, uh, sent our office. Attached is a photograph of my daughter, Taylor Smith. Taylor was a freshman junior varsity and varsity squad basketball and football cheerleader at Creekview High School, known for her quick wit, wit and infectious squeaky laugh. She was an avid animal rescuer and quickly came to the defense of those she felt were treated unfairly. She was 20 years old when she overdosed in the company of friends who subsequently dumped her body in the yard of an abandoned trailer to avoid arrest for drug possession. Taylor's making a difference by sharing her daughter's story. Her experience is a reminder that we, all of us must act now to reform the system that uh, were too late for her child and countless other children and adults who have been affected by this epidemic. Taylor's mom went on to encourage local law enforcement in her community to use naloxone. And while law enforcement use of naloxone is quite promising, it will not catch all episodes of overdose. That is why another approach that the medical community can help with is co-prescribing naloxone to high-risk patients uh, and including those who are on high morphine equivalent doses. The simple act of speaking to a patient and his or her family member can draw attention to the risks associated with opioids. Providers can also take the time to discuss safe storage and disposal of medicines. The Veterans Health Administration now offers naloxone through its mail order pharmacies. I encourage those of you who use opioids to consider leading the nation again by embracing naloxone, naloxone co-prescription in your practices. I want to turn the clock back a little bit to discuss where we have been, where we have started, and what we have accomplished on the federal level. I think all of you know we are tremendously indebted to the Centers for Disease Control, who noted the escalation in overdoses that have been uh, started prior to the administration and identified them as an injury prevention issue. I remembered my time here in Massachusetts with uh, Hillary Jacobs, and we were kind of complaining at the lack of the federal response to the opioid epidemic. And uh, it was heartening to see ONDCP, before my time, uh, uh, release a drug abuse uh, prevention plan. Um, in 2010, and it happened actually earlier here in Massachusetts, drug poisoning deaths surpassed uh, the historically most lethal cause of preventable injury traffic crashes, and these rates continue to escalate. Uh, these findings put drug overdoses squarely on the map as a source of preventable injury and as such places a prevention obligation on our community and legitimate drug supply chain. 